Hi, I'm Diasha. In our previous lesson, we learned how to distinguish between acids and bases by using chemical indicators and through a simple taste test using regular substances found in our kitchens. But are all acids or bases the same? This is the focus of this lesson. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to define the terms concentrated and dilute, classify acids and bases as weak or strong. To achieve these outcomes, we ask the following questions. Are all bases the same? And what about acids? Are these acids the same? How can we tell the difference? Right, now to begin with, let's go to the periodic table. Remember, the metals are found in groups on the left-hand side of the table. Group 1 metals are called alkali metals because they all react in a particular way. Let's recap the reactions of group 1 metals. Group 1 metals all react with oxygen to form white metal oxides. We noticed that these metal oxides have two other properties that are important to remember. They all dissolve easily in water and the solution formed is basic. Notice that the litmus paper changes from pink to blue quite quickly. These metal oxides are soluble bases. Remember, the word soluble means is able to dissolve. To make life easier, chemists decided to have one word for soluble bases. The word we use is alkali. Here I have a collection of different metal oxides. Calcium oxide, zinc oxide, lead 2 oxide and copper 2 oxide. You will notice that these oxides are not all white. Lead 2 oxide is yellow and copper 2 oxide is black. Now I'm adding water to each of these samples. Can you see that not all the calcium oxide dissolves? There are small particles of white calcium oxide floating in the water. Some of the calcium oxide did dissolve but not all of it. So we say it is slightly soluble or partially soluble. What about the other oxides? Notice that these are even less soluble than the calcium oxide. Most of the metal oxide remains undissolved. This means that none of these oxides are alkalis. Only group 1 metal oxides are alkalis. There's one thing that's bothering me now. Can we be sure that these metal oxides are all basic? We did check this in our series on chemical reactions, but to make sure Let's use red litmus paper to check if these solutions are basic. Yes, here are our results. You can clearly see that all the metal oxides are basic, but notice that some of the indicator changed color quicker than other samples. We say some chemicals are strong bases, like group 1 metal oxides, but others are weak bases. Now, Let's take a look at the periodic table again to see if we can establish a trend. When I move across the periodic table from group 1 towards group 4, the metal oxides become weaker bases and the indicator takes longer to change colour. Now it is important to note that the nature of the chemical determines if it is a weak base or a strong base. For example, sodium oxide dissolves in water to form sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Nothing we do to it will change this fact. If we use only a little or a lot of solution, it is always a strong base. In the same way, calcium oxide is a weak base. It will always be a weak base. Only three substances, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are strong bases. 
all the other metal oxides are weak bases. It is important that you learn this fact. The same principle holds true for acids. Remember, we found that non-metal oxides are acidic. When we test these non-metal oxides with blue litmus paper, the blue litmus turns red. Now, it is interesting to note that the acidic strength of these non-metal oxides increases when moving across the periodic table from group 4 to group 7. So now we can match this trend with the trend we established for bases. Can you see how these fit together? The strength of bases decreases moving from left group 1 to right group 4 and the strength of acids increases from group 4 to group 7. Some oxides of elements in between group 3 and 4 can act as either acids or bases. These include some neutral substances. This trend leads us to understand that we need to have a way to measure this range from strong acids to weak acids to neutral to weak bases to strong bases. We will explore this idea in our next lesson, but we have some more important facts to learn for today. Did you know that there are three strong acids that you need to know about? These are hydrochloric acid. This has a formula HCl. Nitric acid, HNO3, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. All the other acids you will deal with at school are considered weak acids. So for example, vinegar and lemon juice are both weak acids. You cannot do anything to make them strong. But what happens when you add water to an acid? Yasha, did you ask what happens when you add water to acid? It's a very important question, but there's something that you should know about it. We never add water to acid for a very good safety reason. Let me show you why. The reason we never add water to acid is because of this acid, concentrated sulfuric acid. If you add water to this acid, an exothermic reaction takes place. It can start to bubble and get very hot. Wow, that's hot already. It can even splatter out of the test tube and burn you. The correct way to do this process is to take acid and add it to water. Now we can trickle down a little bit of acid into the water. This process of adding acid to water is called diluting and it gives us another term that we can learn as part of our terminology. Have a look here. This concentrated acid has been diluted. It is now still a strong acid, but it's diluted. In our first example, we chose a strong acid. We used concentrated sulfuric acid and diluted it. Now let's choose one of these weak acids. Here I have some lemon juice. It is concentrated weak acid. I'm going to add this to water. What do you think you'll get? I'm sure you've got that right. It's a dilute weak acid. Once you know the acids and basics, anything is possible. Let's take a look at today's task. Write down an example of each of the following. A strong concentrated acid, a weak dilute acid, a weak concentrated base, and a strong dilute alkali. Make sure you join me for our next lesson on acids and bases where we will discover and use a method to measure a range of acidity. Until then, goodbye. Yeah.